So guys, today's video is going to be a bit of an informative sort of video. I want to talk about how my R15 has served me for the past 4,300 kilometers. I've been riding my bike for 6 months now and I want to share my ownership experience of this bike. I've done a couple of long rides on this bike, probably around 400 to 500 kilometers. And I've ridden this bike for 12 to 13 hours continuously more than once. I have ridden this bike in all kinds of terrain, be it the good roads, bad roads, highways, village roads, off roads. Well, that is not practical given the bike is not meant for that. But yes, I can tell you everything you want to know about this bike. But to be more specific, I can tell you whether you should buy this bike or not. So stay tuned with me and uh, please watch the video to the last. If you find this video supportive, please give us a thumbs up and also that would be great if you could subscribe the channel thank you and before starting my video i want to take a moment to thank all of you folks out there who have subscribed to my channel been supporting me and made my followers or subscriber count over 100 thank you so much guys you guys mean a hell lot to me so everyone must be familiar with the fact that it is a 155 cc engine which is producing 19 horses and 15 of torque in short ये सारी चीज़ें आपको पता है ठीक है देर आर टन्स ऑफ यूट्यूब वीडियोज़ फ्लोटिंग अराउंड जिसमें ये सब चीज़ें ऑलरेडी डिस्कस हो चुकी हैं तो मुझे बार बार इसके बारे में डिस्कस नहीं करना है आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू टेल यू दैट ये सारी चीज़ें अकॉर्डिंग टू मी आपके लिए क्या वैल्यू रखती हैं सो इफ़ यू वॉन्ट टू बाई दिस बाइक ये वीडियो आप लास्ट तक देखो एंड आई एम प्रटी श्योर कि लास्ट मोमेंट तक आते हैं कि आपको डेफिनेटली एक आपका मन बन जाएगा अगर आप ये बाइक को लेना चाहते हो या फिर नहीं so let's talk about the good bits of this bike which in fact are the best in segment features the first thing that comes to your mind when you ride this bike is its engine let's keep the power aside for a moment talk about refinement the engine is so smooth that you barely feel any kind of vibes although a brand new bike might shiver a little bit after two services my bike is smoother than ever in 150cc to 200cc segment it is the smoothest bike at this given price point and at any point you don't feel like that this bike is struggling or under stress although you have to lube your chain at proper intervals to keep your bike vibes free and uh, smooth okay i want to keep the power and comfort talk for the end of the video coming to the next good bit the looks hell it looks gorgeous yamaha has done some real magic in the latest iteration of this bike all of you have seen the bike and i don't want to do any poetry now it is just beautiful best in price and segment make her stand next to ktm or bajaj this bike will make you feel its presence so the next good thing is its handling now i won't say that it is as good as that of ktm duke but still considering a sport bike it handles amazingly especially in the corners it is unbeatable in the curves but for the fact that it has mrf rubber on it which is pretty decent by the way which brings to me another fact which is tires so talking about the tires it has mrf zapper on it which works nice under normal rides highway or city but don't lean much and uh, try not to brake hard as even on the normal terrain your wheel might lock up which is a liability brakes are good the lack of abs is noticeable hell i would have bought this bike even if the price was higher because of the inclusion of abs but skills are also important you gotta learn how to deal with panic situation without the aid of ABS. It could be the brake or it could be the tire. Like I said, your rear wheels ends up locking whenever you press the brake lever you know, a bit harder. So you have to take care at that point. So the next good thing is cooling. It works pretty efficiently and you could barely hear the noise. But the bad thing is that the fending the heat away, it could have been better. You do feel heat on your calf region, but you can't ask much at this price point. I have ridden this bike in bumper to bumper traffic conditions and some off-road conditions as well, which led to low RPM conditions and eventually the fan turned on. But it is not as loud as that of the and is quite efficient but yes fending the heat away it could have been better i don't think it's a deal breaker is it so guys i don't want to talk about much of the technical specification here about the diameter of the disc and the wheel size and all because i want to make this video short and as informative as i can make it 
So yes, bear with me and uh, now we will talk about the engine and uh, riding comfort. Well, I have spoken about the refinement. Now let's talk about the power. So there are some things need to be kept in mind. This bike is fastidious. To enjoy its full potential, you need to weigh less. Well, I'm not belittling someone, it's just the truth. You should be under 70 to enjoy its full potential. It is lightweight, but being just 139 kg, its 19.3 horses feels plenty on the highway. Torque is as par with a 150cc bike. In fact, it is more than an average 150cc bike. You do have to do some downshift to overtake when you're on higher gears. Sixth gear is very sluggish, so don't expect to overtake with a twist of the throttle when on higher gears. And it doesn't mean that the engine is any bad. The engine is a delight for the highways. Even with the light, the bike feels planted on the highway because of the aerodynamics. The windshield does an amazing job up until the speed of 100 to 120. After that, it would be better to tuck yourself under the windshield. The claim top speed is around 135 km per hour, but I believe it can go way faster than that because I rode it at 135 and it had still some juice left in her. And talking about the mileage in highway condition, when I was running approximately like uh, 80 to 100 km per hour, I was getting like 47 to 48 km per hour, sorry, km per liter. And in hilly conditions where I usually do most of my rides, it was around uh, 30 to 35 km per liter. And uh, being an 11 liter tank, it can give you a pretty decent range. So consider this bike has the best 150cc engine any bike in India could possibly has at present. Hell, this engine is perfect for touring, except for the ergonomics, which brings us to our next point and the most crucial one. To make it easier, I want to divide my riding experience according to the type of terrain. I'll talk about the good road first. By that, I mean highway and beautiful curvy roads of the hills. With the handling and engine characteristic, this bike is a delight to ride in the beautiful roads. When you have no fear of potholes or bad traffic, this bike literally glides through air. Beautiful roads are the best companion of this bike. Be it from the plains or from the hills, you can actually tour on it, given the roads are great. Yes, you will feel discomfort, but at least not while riding. Although you have to give a second thought to take your pillion with you because that's not very practical. So talking about the pillion comfort, first of all, let's remove the word comfort from there because it is not comfortable absolutely because uh, it's a sports bike. Second thing, it is not like that your pillion cannot even sit. Actually, he can sit. Uh, the seat is, you know, better than that of the KTM RC390 or RC200. You can actually ride your you can actually ride your bike with your pillion and enjoy it uh, unless you are riding in the you know speed limit of 50 to 60 km per hour because braking at that speed would be you know kind of hazardous could be hazardous for you and your pillion as well talking about the city rides in cities this bike is pretty maneuverable the footage you just saw was uh, from the city actually i was riding in a city with the pillion on board so i can tell you this this bike is absolutely maneuverable you will not feel any kind of hesitation or any kind of lack of confidence riding this bike Okay, so far I have told you the stuff which somehow has managed to encourage you to buy this bike. But here you need to give some second thoughts. Because this bike is not meant for long rides. Yes, that's the truth and you know it very well. Long rides or interstate rides where the cities don't have the privilege of having smooth routes. Because I have done a couple of such rides and I was literally cursing myself. You want to do Ladakh? This would be the best choice to ruin your trip. Hell, even a slight bump on road will shake your arms, your back, your shoulders, your palms, and of course, your beloved pillion as well. If you don't have great roads in your area, don't buy it. Period. With the price tag of 1.27 lakhs extra room and uh, 1.45 to 47 lakhs on road, this bike is undeniably the best bike in Indian market, considering the looks and the features. But it is you who have to decide what does best stands for you. If you have a spare bike for your tours, then you can buy this bike. Actually, this bike will be a great change of taste for you. Simply do one thing. 
go to the showroom get the bike and uh, take a thorough test ride of this bike don't ride this bike in the smooth terrains try to ride this bike on rough terrains because there only you will get to know this bike in a much better way so in a nutshell i can tell you only one thing you have to love this bike so much if you want to overlook all its flaws and if you can live with it it will reward you in many unexpected ways you can trust me on that so um, this was my ride review or uh, should i say ownership experience review of my five virgin 3 and uh, if you find this video helpful do show your love like this video subscribe to my channel and uh, yes thank you so much again for being here for watching this video till the end you have been a great audience thank you so much and stay healthy stay happy